And so today's topic, what we're going to talk about is who's in the house. Who's in the house? When you look at the word house in the Bible, the Bible is a symbolic book. The Bible isn't for the people in the world. The Bible is for God's people. And so the Bible is a book of images. And so when he's talking about the images, he's talking about the, 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 the action of a thing. And so when you look at the word house in the Bible, house represents an individual. It represents that person's life. And so when we're talking about the spiritual realm, you got to understand this is a realm that's invisible. You cannot see it with your natural eye. You, 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 you can't see it. It's invisible. It's unseen. You got to know that God is unseen. You got to understand that this whole world is made up of different kingdoms. You got the animal kingdom. You got the plant kingdom. You got the uh, you got even physical kingdoms. You got different kingdoms from different countries. You got the kingdom, but all of it is broken down into two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Every king, every kingdom has a king. So the people who are in the world, their king is Satan. They may not even know it, but their king is Satan. And so if a person is not saved, automatically Satan is their king. And this is why sometimes when we go through things, people are like, why did God let that happen? We say, why did God let that happen? It's because they don't understand the laws of the kingdom. Because you got to give yourself to a king in order for that king to run your life or to show you how to display your life. And so when we talk about God is the kingdom of God, Satan is the kingdom of the world. A kingdom needs, a, every king got a people. So when we're talking about us at the church, we're supposed to be the kingdom of God. We're supposed to be God's people. The people in the world is of Satan's kingdom. This is why they can hurt you. They can mistreat you. They can say whatever they want to say because they don't belong to God. And so when we get mad at people, I can't understand why they treat me like this. I can't understand. You got to understand. These people are ran by Satan. They do what they're supposed to do. You can't expect the people in the workplace to act like how God's people are. They not saying that. You are. And so God is saying you got to know the difference between the, the, uh, the two kingdoms. And so when you understand the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual kingdom, I told you, is invisible. It's unable to see with the natural eye. But you can see the effects of it. You can see the actions, the words, the thoughts, whatever is demonstrated by a person. That's how you know what kingdom they belong to. So if you see somebody cussing somebody out, they stomping them, they call them some everything, but they, they, they go to church and they got a title. You may think, well, oh, they in the church, or oh, they got a title, that means they belong to God. No, that ain't what that means. When you see they just cuss somebody, they just stomp somebody, they whatever, forget all y'all and all that stuff. He's showing you that their life is revealing to you that they belong to another kingdom. So God is looking at our actions. You got to remember, that's why in Romans 10, how did you get in God's kingdom? It was based on what you said and what you thought, right? Some of us, we got into the kingdom by when we got hurt and we wanted change, right? We were crying and we just said, I wanted things to get better. So what happened to you, your pain, and you were looking for him to help you, and you opened up your mouth. And so that's telling you if you're going to operate in the spiritual kingdom, those two things, it's ran by your thoughts, and it's ran by your words. So I'm going to show you something. God showed me, gave me this illustration this morning. This is a picture of water. This picture of water represents God. And so if God, this picture of water represents God, I pour the water into here, this is you. Right? We look just like God. So, God was invisible. So in other words, write this down. My first state was invisible. The spiritual me is invisible. I'm talking about before you came down here to earth, the real you is invisible. Because you got to understand, we've been saying we God's children, but you got to look at it. If your daddy is a spirit, how can I say, I look like God, God don't have nobody. You're looking at the suit, what I'm here for here on earth. No, the real me is invisible like my father. So when you saying that you are a child of God, you got to now remember in your mind the real you is invisible.
impossible. And so you represent the kingdom of God when you give your life to the Lord. Not just by going to church, not by reading your Bible, but God now begins to make your spirit man like him. Inside of you. And so when we come to earth, he give us a house. That's the body you live in. But you got to understand when what's determined whether or not what we go to heaven is, is what's determined by what spirit is in the house. Because we have been walking around here thinking that we look like this 24-7. I'm going to show you in the scriptures when we open up the door, when we, we open up the door automatically, write this down. You open up your spiritual door by what you think and by what you speak. When you speak Law, when you speak anything that goes up against the word of God, a demonic spirit is going to automatically come and live inside of your body. That's the law. So this is what happens. What we think, oh, that ain't going to happen. So let's say, here it is. I go to, I, I, I'm a child of God, but I got some friends, and they, they, they do the Ouija board, and they read the tarot cards. So my friends are dark. So I'm going to get a tablespoon. I'm going to get a teaspoon. Y'all see the color by my water, right? Did that change me? Oh, but we thought we were the same. I'm the same person. So when I went and started opening up them tarot cards, that did that, yeah. So then now, somebody do something to me, and I get mad by myself, I start calling them all kind of names. What is that going to do with my relationship with him? What it's going to do is change my relationship with him, so now I'm going to now push away from him, and I'm going to be closer to the darkness. Why? Because being close to him is going to convict me of what's in me. You went to that tarot cord. You went to playing with that Ouija board. Now you're speaking negative thoughts. So to get them thoughts to hush down, I got to be closer to them. Because being closer to them, I don't feel bad for what I do. Are you seeing what we're doing? And so that's why when we go to church... I don't like they said this. They said that. It's supposed to. Because guess what happened? When you allow God to convict you and you repent and change for real, watch what happens. What happened to the water? It cleared up a little bit. So when you hear the word of God, it begins to now, it purifies you. But then you let it purify you. But then you go home and do the same thing that you said you weren't going to do no more. So now, you move back over here. And so we're going back and forth with our life. Then you go to church, get convicted, then light up a little bit. So I get back close to God a little bit. This taking too long, God. You look the same on the outside, but you forgot that the spiritual you is getting dark. And the more darker that you get, it's the further you disconnect from your father. This don't mean you still come to church. You still getting on the Bible study line. You still reading your Bible. But when no change is applied to your life, your spirit man still is getting darker. Because you're not pouring into you're not pouring any him into you. This is making sense. And so you gotta understand because as you being his child, he expects for you to be back to this. Jesus came so we can get back to this. And so when our life is not changing, we have gotten comfortable with darkness. 
It's the spirit that's in you. And sometimes you can tell when you can smell the spirits within us when you when we talk. Y'all ain't never smell joke. Especially when you're on a fast. You ain't eating. What's in you gonna come out of you. Y'all ain't notice that on, on, on the fast. What comes in you? Think about it, okay? I ain't trying to be gross. When you go to the bathroom, do you not know when you eat vegetables and fruit, your stool don't smell? When you eat right, your stool don't smell. But when we eat some stuff, we ain't got no business. We about, man, you be about to knock everybody out the house. You know why? Because your body got something in there that was toxic. And so you got to understand, it's your job to deal with who's in the house. So let me give you some characteristics of your father. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 2. So let me give you some characteristics of your father. When you are, when you got the spirit of God in you, hear me, spirit, spirit, spirit. You got the spirit of God in you, you got the wisdom of your father. You got his DNA in you. You are back like how he created you from before Adam sinned. I want you to look at Genesis 2 and 7. It says here, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When we read this, we just say, God, and man became a living soul. Listen, I want y'all to think about this. What God is showing you is the breath that is in you, you got, when you, when you breathe, because you got to remember God is a spirit. So when you open up your mouth, breath comes out of our mouth. So when you open up into your mouth, you got to understand you can either give life or you can give death to whatever that you're speaking. So when the Bible says God blew into Adam, he gave life. So he's letting you know when you're in his kingdom and when you're his child, you got to guard your words and you got to guard your thoughts because you will give life to your thoughts. So when you say in your mind, man, you know what? Ain't nobody will never marry me. I'm going to always be by myself. You are giving death. You're speaking death to yourself by what you think about you because of who you were created to be. You, you got to understand you are a living being. Your thoughts live. You got to understand even in heaven, the paper talk. In heaven, the microphone talk. In heaven, the tissue talk. Everything is alive. Why do you think uh, people that got plants, what happens when you talk to your plants? They grow. So you got to think about it. When you think certain thoughts in your mind, your thoughts grow. Because you got God's DNA in you, and so you can either give life to what you think, or either you can bring death to yourself by what you think. You got to understand that this is a part of us. He, he, he's showing us that whatever you think and whatever you speak, you are the one that is birthed in life or death into your life by what you're thinking and by what you're speaking. You're doing that. The devil is not doing that. Why? Because you got to write this down. I'm mysterious. You got the miraculous, mysterious power of God on the inside of you, the spiritual you is. Because can I tell you, the spiritual realm is the parent to the natural realm. What do I mean? God, before he created us, the Bible says he thought it into existence. And it came. The Bible says in Genesis, he said, let there be light in it came. Well, God don't have a mouth, how did it happen? It's that like God thought, let there be light, and then light came. And he said, so as you be my children, whatever you think, I ain't going to make it. God said, then you can't make it, because that's what you said. I'm going to catch a cold. Why you caught a cold? Because that's what you said. I feel like I'm going to get sick. You end up getting sick because that's what you thought it before you got there. When I'm broke, you broke because that's what you think. Because we have learned to go by what we feel and not understand that you're not supposed to go by what you feel. That's part of the other kingdom. The demonic kingdom, the Satan is the part of the kingdom where you go by what you feel. God kingdom, you don't go by what you feel. You go by speaking his word because his word is designed to bring life to your life. I need y'all to get this. 
His word is designed to bring life to every area of darkness in your life. And the reason why we don't see life is because we still are stuck in the demonic kingdom. So, Apostle, what is the demonic kingdom? Satan is part of the demonic kingdom. The demonic kingdom is everything that you experience in the flesh. They hurt me. I hit my arm on, 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 the, on the pulpit. And so now I can't lift it up. So now I can't go. I can't bathe myself. Now I can't cook. Now I can't drive. So now I'm up here building up all this negative stuff by me hitting my arm on the pulpit. Now I'm coming up with all these excuses. Now I can't do I can't lay down right. I can't put on my clothes. Because now we building up stuff based on something that's in the flesh. Satan wants you to get caught on what you see with your natural eyes. Because when you're so connected to what you see, you have disconnected yourself from God. So, the world is ran by Satan's kingdom. Let's write this down. Satan's kingdom, you don't need any faith. You just go by what you see. You just say what you think and you say what you feel. When you say what you feel and you say what you think, Satan is designed to bring the past for you. Because he wants you to go by what you see with the natural eyes and what you feel. God's kingdom is not designed by that. God's kingdom is designed to walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm going to show you something. Turn your Bibles to Genesis. Uh, we read 7. Let's jump down to Genesis 15. When you look at Genesis 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man, and he put him into the garden of Eden. Because you got to remember, Adam got a spiritual body now. So, and, God, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. This is where you got to understand that you are a child of God. God is going to always give you a purpose. So he was telling him, I want to take you to the garden. I want you to tend to it. I want you to protect it. Verse 16. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it in the day that you eat of it. Eat there of it, you shall surely die. You got to understand, as a child of God, if God is your father, he don't put you here on earth to live it how you want to live it. He put you here and he give you instructions because he's saying it's something that I got to get out of your life. It's something that I want you to do while I put you here on earth. So when you got people saying, I don't know what to do, it's because you ain't asked God what's your purpose. Stop waiting on the pastor. You get in prayer and you ask God, what is your purpose for being here on earth? Because when you're having a relationship with God, he's going to tell you what he got you here for. So when you look at it, God already told him, you can do this, but don't do that. You can have whatever you want, but don't eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, because if you eat of it, you're going to disconnect yourself from me. God had already told him. Look at verse 18. And the Lord God said to to him, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. Ladies, this is where we understand you don't go to every man God made you for somebody. And you got to understand. This, look at the text. It said, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone, but I will make him a help meet. So in other words, we got to be working on ourselves so that you can help the man, not hinder the man. Do you hear me? It's not our job. To hinder. It's our job to help him. To help make him better. But you can't make him better if you sick. I know what you're I'm talking about the invisible realm. Because we have a bunch of ladies trying to go to men. And you want these men. You ain't helping him. You hindering him. Come on y'all. You got to line up. God said I ain't created you and didn't have no purpose. I got a purpose for your life. That's what look what he said in the text now. This ain't me. This is the word. He said, verse 19, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them into Adam. Look what he said. And Adam to see what he would call him. So do what God did. So if Mr. Ed is dealing with sickness, he will bring healing to him. 
And so when Mr. Ed look in the, in the mirror at his body, he's going to say, what do you see? And if Mr. Ed say, I see sickness, that's the indication that Mr. Ed got the wrong person in his house. Because God said, when he brought, whatever he brought to Adam, Adam saw it the way his father saw it. Well, God, I'm broke. God said, you, again, who's in your house? Because that, that ain't what I taught you. I taught you to see it. Where well, my bank account say zero, I don't care what your bank account say. That's what the God in this world said. He said, I thought of, uh, I got everything in the palm of my hand. But you telling me what you see in the bank account? And I'm telling you what you see in your imagination. Because the spiritual part of you, I told you to see things what I see. Well, God, the doctor said, I'm sick. And he's saying, but what did I say? Well, my test say this. I feel like that. So well, what, what is God trying to show you about you? He's trying to show you you got the wrong spirit in your imagination. You got the wrong spirit in your mind. What is a spirit? A spirit is something that's invisible, that lives inside of you, that makes you feel the way that you feel. It's a spirit that makes me don't want to talk. It's a spirit that makes me don't want to be bothered. It's a spirit that makes me want to be mean. It's a spirit that makes me want to fight. It's a spirit that makes me want to cuss. It's a spirit that makes me want to act an absolute fool. Those are spirits in you that make you act the way that you act. And you sitting here talking about you're a child of God, and God say, where? Where? You let these imposters take over your body when I gave you the power and I asked you, what do you see? So he asked, look at the text. He asked Adam, verse 20, and Adam, and Adam gave him names to all the cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found a helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made woman. Ladies, this is why the Bible said we are the weaker vessel. Because when he made Adam, when he made the woman, he took up, he, he took the rib out of Adam. This is why women is so feminine and so sensual. It's because out of that spiritual place, God made her from that place. But when he made Adam, he pulled Adam, he took the dust out of the ground, then he blew him. But that ain't how he made Eve. He made Eve, well, when Adam was asleep, he took him out of that spiritual place. So this is what he's telling us. He made us out of a place for us to be sensual. He made us out of a place for us to be discerning. He made us out of a place that we got to know that we got something connection with our father. When you walk into the room, you say something ain't right. And when you wake up in the middle of the night, something just came in the room. Because you being sensual. But when you ain't sensual, you have become disconnected from your father. And you no longer know what's going on in the spiritual realm. He said the church won't turn to a place of dead man bones. People in the church and they can't discern that. The witches in the world are sitting in the church and people don't discern, they don't know. People in church is where the pastors are with, warlock. And they don't know because they, 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 they're not sensual. They're not discerning. So it says here, he says so, and he called the deep sleep and he brought forth the woman unto the man. See ladies, we are a gift to your husband. You a gift to him. Well, God brought him this woman. And so when a man, when, when, when God gives, when he gives that woman to that man, that man got to know that she is a gift from God. She's not somebody that's going to give him a headache. She's not somebody that's going to distress him. Can I tell you, this is why we don't want to get into marriages prematurely like I did. Because when you get into something prematurely, you're going to act like a hellcat. And when you act like a hellcat because I ain't know how, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what spirit that was in me. And so this is why we acting crazy in relationships because we have not took the time to know who's in the house and get the people out of the house so that when we get into the right relationship, we won't sabotage you. Sometimes you will sabotage the right relationship because you have not got these forces of darkness out of your house. And it says here, and Adam said, look at this. 
And Adam said, uh, now, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Think about it. When you take the woe off of one man, it's really man. So actually, as a woman, you got that same power and authority. So if it's something that your spouse lacked, you got that power that's in you because it was created in you to manifest what he's not manifesting. To push him to where he needs to go. So that's why a good wife, you push him into his destiny. A good wife, you push him into his business. A good wife, you push him to walk in strength, not hinder. Because you got his ability and you got the spirit in me. You got the creator on the inside of you that you understand. Yeah, I may be a Jonathan at the school, but when I open up my mouth, I am a master builder. That's why apostles build. They build with their words and they watch their words take flight and manifest. In August, it'll be 12 years. I got the very book where I spoke. That I said, I'm going to birth for the church. Apostles, they speak things into existence. We got the ability. What took me 20 years to get, I can pull you into it in a year. But because if we don't understand how to walk in the spiritual realm, we'll be stagnant when it don't make sense to me. I don't understand. It don't understand because you see it on the outside. You have not connected yourself spiritually back to the inside of your father. That's why most
serpent. The serpent was a tempter. He was a suggester. What he was doing, he would put things in your mind. You got to be careful when people put things in your mind. That's why the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 26, God created us in the likeness and image. My deliver me from me program, I talk about the image. What is the image? The image is a mental picture. The image is a mental picture in your mind. It's what you see when your eyes are closed. It's what you say, I see darkness, I see an ugly face. Those are images in your mind. Have you ever wondered when you get ready to pray and you see all the ugly faces? Those are images and those are spirits that are within you, that's around you, because you're seeing the image in the spiritual world. So Satan, he is a tempter. He's an influencer. And the Bible said too, he, he, he has the spirit, he was the spirit of divination. What is divination? It's when you begin to seek knowledge by another means. Like I said, if I use the Ouija board, where I, pay, I go get my palm read, where that one time I get him the palm read, it opened up the door because I went to divination. And now, a spirit comes in and it taints me. And because I don't feel anything now, I think it's okay. But not understanding, it did not affect my natural life yet, but it affected my spiritual life. And so by my spiritual life being affected, when you start seeing a decrease in you wanting to do the things of God, it's because you have allowed another spirit to come in. When you find yourself don't want to read no more, another spirit don't came in. Find yourself you don't want to pray. You don't want to go to church. It don't got bored to you. Something else has came in the house. You got to know the signs. It's what an enemy got us where well, we're comfortable. Because, well, I just come to church. I do what I'm supposed to do. And he trying to tell you, you good, but not understanding you're really not good. Because you have disconnected from God, and the sad part is, you don't know you disconnected from God. So look what it said. The serpent was more subtle. Subtle means he's sneaky. He's going to come and sneak it and craft it than any other the living creatures which the Lord God had made. And Satan said to the woman, he put a thought to his mind, her mind. Can it really be that God has said you should not eat from every tree of the field? So now she got a thought in her mind to make her doubt what her daddy said. Children, are you sure that your mama said that you had to be at home at 12 o'clock? Or she said you need to leave the place at 12 o'clock? You, you, you see what I'm saying? So now he's trying to play with your mind to make you doubt. Well, maybe she said I just need to leave the club at 12 o'clock. She wasn't saying that I need to be in the house at 12 o'clock. I just need to leave the club at 12 o'clock. So now, you now begin to rationalize with what mama said or daddy said. And so, this, and listen what happened. So, he said, verse 2, And the serpent said to the woman, We may eat of the fruit from the trees of the garden, except the, fr the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So she began to tell him what God said. Verse 4, but the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. So now he's coming up against what her authority has said. Well, um, you ain't got to read your Bible. You ain't got to do all that stuff what she's saying. She just tell you that old stuff. So now you let another person tell you different from what you know to be true. You got to understand now you are allowing these other spirits to take over. Look at verse 5. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes, understand, under, underlying eyes. God knows, and the devil told us slightly. He knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Knowing the difference between what's good and what's evil. Blessing and curses. Can I tell you this? L listen now. You got to remember, she was just like this. So now, the devil keep pouring into her. It changes her spirit, man. So now, she's no longer looking through what her father put in her. But she's looking 
through dirty eyes. What am I telling you? Somebody can taint you by what you hear. You can be tainted by what you see. Do you not know somebody can put witchcraft on some food that you eat and it taints your whole body? Do you not know somebody can lay hands on you and release a spirit on you and make you sick? One time. One time. So you hear somebody tell you something, it's coming to change your destiny. Now y'all know the end of the story. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you what, 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 listen what happened. So now, when they go back and get in the presence of their father, look what happened. Look at verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for the food and that it was pleasant to eat, and the tree would be desired and wise, she took the fruit that up and she ate of it. Not only did she eat of it, but she gave it to Adam. And their eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked. And they sold feed trees together and made themselves aprons. Look now, verse 8. And they heard... The voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, mind you, they don't even realize because of the spiritual realm, when they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it changed their whole life. It changed. This is why we live into this world we live in now, because of that one thing they did. Talking to the wrong person can pull you out of God. When they did this, they didn't even know God left them. I'm telling you, you can be connected to the wrong person and God will leave you and you don't even have a clue that he gone. Look what he said. It said, and they heard God walking through the cool of the day and the wife hid herself from the presence of the Lord and amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and he said, where are you come from? And he said, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that? God said, who told you you was naked? Who told you? I never told you you were naked. So now you got some other information that took you away from me. So this is what you got to understand. If you got other spirits in you, you now are pledging your allegiance to another kingdom. And this is just spiritually. This is all in the spiritual realm. So let's turn your Bibles to Proverbs 26 and 2. When you look at Proverbs 26 and 2, the Bible is a book of rules and laws. So I'm going to show you, this is how, this is what happened. When you look at Proverbs 22 and, uh, uh, 26 and 2, it says, As the bird by the wandering and the, swall and the swallow by flying, so the, the curse without a cause shall not come. So in other words, when she ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and she gave it to Adam, it now brought the curse to come in. We get spirits, unclean spirits, by what we do. Did you hear me? By what you do, it brings unclean spirits and they come and live in your body. I watch a scary movie and it scared the whips out of me. I just brought fear into my life by me watching that movie. I was in a car accident and it scared the daylights out of me. It brought the spirit of trauma into me. Do you not know whatever happened in your black bloodline, trauma is transferred. So let's say in my bloodline, the people, the women are abused by men. It's passed down from generation to generation until somebody get delivered. Trauma is passed down. If you see people in life struggling with issues of life, it's passed down. The reason why we, you got people still talking about slavery because people, some people have not got delivered. And this is where God is saying, you got to know who's in your house so you can face this stuff and you can get the spirit out of your house. So you got to understand, you ain't got to sign no paper for a demon to come in. So when you start saying, I hate myself, you get mad. I don't like myself. I don't like my nose. I don't like my face. I'm too dull. I'm too, dull. I'm too skinny. You know what? I'm broke. I'll never be nothing. Everything you're bringing in self-hatred. You're bringing in poor self-esteem. You're bringing in self-rejection. You're bringing in bitterness. You're bringing in resentment. You're bringing it in. By what you say and what you think, you just sitting in the room. I'm hopeless. I'll never get out of this. I just can't see my way out. It's because what you're speaking and what you're thinking, you have pledged your allegiance to another kingdom. The Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together unless they agree? When you agree with what you think, that's who you pledge your allegiance to. Well, I just feel like don't nobody love me. 
You're going to feel like that because you just gave your authority. You just gave your agreement to what you felt and what you think. And God's saying, I can't go up against what you're thinking. I can't go up against what you're speaking. That's why you got to have an apostolic person in your life to show you who you are. To show you your identity. You not, even though I work, if I work as a janitor, just because in the natural I'm a janitor, but when that God sees me, he don't see no janitor, he see a child of a king. But we live our life based on what other people see us, not on what he says about us. And he showed me, he said, it's because we have got sign. Because when, it, when, 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 when trauma was passed to us as little kids, we have stayed stuck. Because, write this down, your conscious mind is right now. Your conscious mind is you at church and I'm talking to you. But if it's something that I say that make you mad, that hurt you 10 years ago, you have now started living in the past. And if you, when you get mad at me and you start saying, that's how my aunt used to talk to me. That's how my mom used to uh, uh, fuss at me. You have left 2022, I mean 2023, and now you have went in the year uh, 20, uh, 2012. All while you're here. So here it is, Mr. Ed talking to me, and he's sitting up there, and I don't appreciate this, and I don't appreciate that. He ain't talking to me about what, what's going on in 2023. I triggered something in him that happened 10 years ago. So we let people have it. Because you still living out your past. You ain't even living in your now. That's why you can wake up and say, it's going to be a bad day. Where did that come from? That didn't come from your conscious mind. That came from somewhere in your past, in your mind. Because we still been stuck in our past. And we still living out of this. And we not letting the word of God change us. It's making sense. It's why you got to pay attention to your thoughts. I can't get in your mind and change you. You the only one can change what goes on in your head. And when we want to do everything else but sit down and, de and deal with these thoughts, the Bible says, 2 Chronicles 10 and 5, cast down imagination. Cast down images. Images in your mind. Images that don't feel good. Images that don't grow. Images that don't nobody like me. Images that don't nobody want to help me. Images that don't sit. You got to cast that mess down. How do I cast it down? With your word, I pull you down in the name of Jesus. You driving. And some tell you, go run that later. Oh, I pull you down in the name of Jesus. You spirit of murder, I see you. Mama tell you to do something. I hate her. You spirit of hatred, I pull you down. You got to fight the images and the spirits that come to your mind. Because these are demons that are influencing your life. And you comfortable letting them live in you. That's just like you let a, fr a stranger come in your house, go in your refrigerator, eat your food, and you don't say nothing. But that's what we do. You wake up, I'm sick, I'm sick. You let the spirit tell you who you are. Instead of you say, oh, no, nah, we ain't going to do this now. We ain't going to do this. We ain't, we're not going to do this. We're going to fight. That's why it's called spiritual warfare. Because you got to go back with what you feel. You got to go back with what's in your mind. So it will look like you're Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's definitely looks like because you got to take it all now. You know what I said? No. So then a spirit of rejection come on. I said, no, I renounce you. There is a spirit of rejection. I reject you. I reject you. You ain't going to make me feel like they rejected me. You ain't going to make me feel like they don't care about me. I reject you. So you get out of my house in the name of Jesus. Next thing you know, who I felt like felt me made me feel like rejection. You know, I don't feel like that no more. What did I just do? I just cast out what was in me. But if you are not casting out the spirits that's in you. These are the spirits that are controlling your life. So how do you open up doors? You open up doors by what you think. You open up doors by what you do. You open up doors by what you say. You open up doors by what you touch. You open up doors by what you eat. You open up doors by what you dream. You can dream that you know what? You say, ooh, I dream. I had a dream that I had all this money. And I was picking up all this money on the ground. Ooh, and God gave me something. God gave me that money. No, what you realize, you've been tricked. God don't give you money. He gave you the, he gave you the spirit of money and how to make money. So when you fed yourself, seeing yourself picking up all this money on the ground, that was the spirit of poverty. And the enemy came in because he know you're not connected to God. So he went by what you see. So that means you came into a covenant with poverty 
by that dream. That's why when we have bad dreams, we say, no, I renounce you and I denounce you. I declare the decree, it will not manifest in this life, nor the life to come. Every time I have a bad dream, if you know you woke up and you know you dreamed something you can't remember, I renounce and denounce every dream that did not come from God. I don't remember, but I renounce and denounce you. You will not manifest what is happening. You just stop what that devil trying to bring into your life. Because he knew if you if he bring it to your dreams and you don't say that, then he got permission to bring it there. You get mad and you say some negative stuff out of your mouth. You don't repent and count for the words in the atmosphere. It's the demon's job to bring to pass what you spoke. Because Ephesians 2 by this time, it says Satan is the prince of the air. In other words, these demons, they wait on us to get frustrated and say something. They wait on him to say, man, I'm tired of this. I can't do this no more. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. They wait. First place you go get it. Overwhelmed, go get it. Depression, go get it. How did they come? He opened up a door when he opened up his mouth and spoke negative out of his life. And this is why the devil don't want you to get the teaching at church. Because you won't never know what the laws is. You just keep being mad at God for no reason when really you didn't do your due diligence. So, it's through what you do, what you say, what you think, what you talk, what you eat. It invokes the, it, the, the demonic spirits to automatically come live in your house. That's just like we go to Walmart, what happens? The door automatically opens. So in other words, that's why the Bible saying Deuteronomy 24, earth and heaven is just a witness against you. So when earth see you say something and earth hear you say, speaking something that's not of you, it's telling God on you because now the demonic spirits have a legal right to live in your body. This is why sometimes we are sick because it's what we did that brought the sickness. And we say, I don't know why God allowed this to happen. God didn't allow nothing to happen. God allowed it to happen, but it's because you didn't know the laws. What you did, it brought a spirit to come in. Even myself, having sex at a young age, it brought depression on me and I had no idea. The person who I was intimate with had depression. As a teenager, I did not have depression. I became uh, uh, sexual with that person one time. I went from being a regular teenager to being depressed and dealing with self-hatred and dealing with all this stuff because the person who I connected with, they had those things. And by me being involved with them things, it came to me. So then now I go from being a typical teenager now, my mama, what's wrong with you? You know, not wanting to tell her what I did, what I said. It's because I brought stuff on me. You see what I'm saying? This is why we got to talk to our children. Because if you don't talk to them, they having these feelings. Yeah, you, 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 you may say, I told you not to do it, but you didn't tell them why. You didn't tell them what happened to you. Stop acting like you're so sad. Stop acting like you didn't have these feelings. You see what I'm saying? You got to talk to them and make them let them know. I don't want you to do this, but when you have them urges, come to me. Let's talk about this. Ask me and I will pray with you. But when we just say, I told you I'd do it, that's what I mean. You're going to lose your children. They know what you don't like. But when you sit up here not talking because we so religious, and we do not know how to communicate with our children. Children are having demons inside them and the parents. You, you fine with it. So, you got to know, even parents, some of this music is demonically driven. One of the songs outside of my daughter that Beyonce sang, and she said on one of the songs when they play it backwards, she said she's married to Satan. And so when you, children are playing these songs, they are now marrying themselves to Satan by just playing the record. So Satan is very crafty. You don't have to sign a paper. It's what you do that gives him that permission to now live in your child's life. Now they don't want to listen to you. Now they don't want to clean up. Now they, you get on my nerve. Now you and them fussing. You and them arguing. It's because some other spirits don't came in. 
There ain't no peace in the house because other spirits have came in to fight up against you. You got to know when these other spirits come in, they're coming in to take over your household because you're supposed to be representing God. And so this is why we got to know who's in the house because whoever the strongest in the house, that's who's going to run the house. So we see contention, fussing, fighting, arguing. You ain't talking. They ain't talking. You turn your back to the enemy have came in. The enemy comes to bring separation and division. So when you bring those spirits in, you're giving them permission to take over. And can I tell you, if you got parents, I mean, you got children, not only are they coming to take you over, but they're coming to take your children over. I can tell you the moment when the enemy came in my marriage. It came to tell everything, children, everything. So you can't think, well, they ain't there. No, 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 no. You better know what's going on. You best to know what's going on. You better know what, what, what they watch on the TV. You better know what, what they listening to. Because those spirits would come in and they would take over the house. I seen a little de a demon. I had to do deliverance on a three-month-old baby one time because of the filthiness and perversion in the house. The demon came in the baby. I'm praying on the baby and the baby just throwing up on my back. The baby just throwing up. I can lay hands on the baby. The baby just throwing up. Demons don't care. When you don't want to clean up, that's a demon. Don't want to take a bath, that's a demon. Don't want to comb your hair. We look at so many young people don't want to comb their hair. That is a demonic spirit that don't want people to take care of themselves. And we realize every time I got to style, wow, you must have. <laughs> your breath smelling and you talking to people. This, this is hygiene. The Bible says that the God is cleanliness. And when we sit up here at church and we are not let, we are not right recognizing who's in the house. When we as a people Stop taking care of ourselves. A demon don't okay, came in. How you gonna tell us you love yourself and we ain't trying to exercise? We ain't watching what we eat. We ain't taking care of the church that God lives in. The house He gave. Why would He give you another a, a physical house if you don't take care of the house He He gave you? I'm just waiting on God to give me this. God. You don't even keep that car clean. Why would I give you a BMW? Why would I give you a five bedroom and you don't keep your apartment clean? Can I walk in your closet right now? Can I walk in your bedroom right now? And you go through. Amen. <laughs> Praying I don't have to go to the bathroom. You see how we got these imposters in the house? Look at your house, it's going to tell you who's in there. You go in your house and you feel tired. That's the spirit in there. You feel dreary. Depression is in there. You go in your bedroom. I feel so frustrated. Frustration is in there. You can't rest. Restlessness is in the house. How come we comfortable with these spirits in our house? How come we got relationships and we comfortable with it being dysfunctional? All we do is fuss and fight. Y'all don't think nothing wrong with that? What's wrong with that? We don't talk. Y'all don't think nothing wrong with that? Try you not talking to God. Watch how that they will beat your brains down. Because God can't do it if you don't talk. He can't do it if you don't spend time with him. Don't tell him you want a man and you can't spend an hour with God. Don't tell me you love him and you can't get in the world. Somebody lying. Who's running your house? She make me mad. Who talking to you? Because it's your name, though. Because I'd rather make you mad and you change than I tell you you're going to a good job and you go to hell. Jesus. Jesus. Because I'm going to just want your money. 
I care about your soul. Because the Bible says, why gain the world and lose your soul? That means you can get all these blessings and go straight to hell. And some of these church folk fine with you going to hell. Because they won't tell you nothing wrong with you. I was mad. I'm like, why they didn't tell me I'm dealing with low self-esteem? Why did they help me? They know I need help. And God said they couldn't help you because they were wounded. Then I had to look at myself. Why am I connected to some people who can't help me? Right, right. That's it. Then you got to ask yourself, why are you fighting folk who trying to help you? <laughs> we don't fight folk. I don't like how she said that. Because he knows that's what it's going to take to get you mad. He knows that's what it's going to take to tell you, wake up. She keep messing with me. That's what it's going to take to get you where you need to get at. I'm known for being a pusher because it's going to take a push to get you to work. It's going to take a push to make you wake up and get out of your stupor. Folks are dying in church. Even though I had a friend, the lady said, hello, say, God, I'll give you one more chance. One more chance. Say the man went to church. And said so he didn't get not one word. The man left church and went and committed suicide. How in the world people come to hear God? Get your mind right because I can be looking good and don't even realize suicide is on me. But can you tell? Don't tell me you love me and you can't tell me if nothing wrong with me. Don't tell me you love me and here it is. You know I'm about to lose my mind and you won't pass me and don't say nothing. You ain't your brother's keeper. You don't love God because if you do, you must see me be like this and don't say a mumbling word with your anointed self. I'm anointed. How come you anointed your next door neighbor person? You said, I need something. Did you give them a word? They just need to say, I need to know if somebody loves me. Did you pick it up in the spirit to go hug? You went to Walmart. He told you, go to I-7. You're going to see a lady there with a yellow shirt on. Is your mind clear enough that God can talk to you like that? I'll be at work sometime. You're going to see a lady sitting in the chair. And I need you to give her a hundred dollars. So I like to hey, put a hundred dollars in the pocket. Hey, go into the cafeteria. That thin ain't right there. Give it to her. Hey, that girl, that mother, she went to cry. Oh, God, they were about to cut all my lights and I was a hundred dollars short. Can he use you? Don't tell me you so good to somebody if you ain't got that. If you spend it every time you got, everything ain't for you. You don't think I was in need? I was in need. But in order to get something to me, I had to plant something into somebody else. God said, who in your house and who you listening to? Get ready to close. Turn your mouth to Mark. Turn your mouth to Mark 1. When you look at Mark 1, let's look at verse 27. When you look at Mark 1, let's look at verse uh, 27. And it says here, and they were all amazed in so much as that they questioned themselves saying, no, let's start at verse 25, 20, 26. And when they saw the unclean spirit, on the last spirit, and they, um, and they saw the unclean spirit had torn him. See, you can tell by what a person do, by what's in them. And had torn him and he cried out. So you crying out after the fool, cried out with a loud voice. He came out of him. No, I'm going to go to verse 21. And they went into the Capernaum, the Capernaum, and straightway on the seventh day, he entered into the synagogue and he taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one had with authority, and had not as the scribes. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Leave us alone. So if I'm preaching to you and you hear my thoughts, shut up, shut up. Those are unclean spirits in you. So that's what, was, that's what the man's spirit was doing. Leave us alone. And the spirit started talking out, this man. Leave us alone. And they cried out, which had to do with thee. They asked Jesus, what do you have to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Thou art come to destroy us. The spirits came. You came to destroy us. I know thee who, in other words, I know who you are. Holy one of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. How in the world we sit up here praying for a devil in Jesus? You can't. 
the devil out of you. My God. My God. You cast it out. When's the last time you cast the devil out of you? When have we cast the devil out of ourselves? Oh, that's spooky. Oh, Hollywood know how to do this. But the church folks can't. Go to Savannah. They got the hundred house. People paying money to go see the spirit. You got the church folks scattered the spirit. How God is a spirit, but you scared of the spirit? Man, you got these spirits on Facebook. Y'all don't think nothing wrong with that? That's, do y'all know that's perverted? And we doing it. Where's that? Where's that God? We following the patterns of the world. And we, we sit up here. The Bible says when well, you got the Holy Spirit. Holy, what does holy mean? Separated. Some apart. I can't do what they do. We got all these people saying they are God, but they they actions ain't showing no holy. See, that's why back in the day you had them old ladies wear the skirt way down here and wear the little doodles and they spit it. Because they did not want to bring no attention to themselves. God saying, but it ought to be a freedom in you that you know how to be modest. But when we so jacked up, we showing everything because we still wounded. Let me show you some titties. Let me show you some butt. Let me show you what I got. Let me show you my G-string. Let me show you my penis print. Let me show you my butt. We, we don't turn into a people of perversion. And we're saying that we're holy, but your ass is saying that you ain't holy because if I can see your, if I can see your panty print, something wrong, you should have saw your panty print. If I can see your nipples, you should saw it. Then you got some of these folks. I ain't gonna say nothing. Come on, these folks to cut your hair off. The Bible says, let the seed the women teach the younger women. But hey, you got to see the women doing the same thing these younger women. So where the holiness at in the church at? We don't have nobody want to be seasoned. Then you got these older folks acting like little children. Then you got the little children five years old. Shut your mouth. Talk to the mama. Shut your mouth. They telling you what to do. And then you got the, the parent acting like a child. Child acting like a parent. You got the women acting like men. You got the men so soft acting like women. It's confusion. So you got all these spirits in our bodies. And you sitting up here talking about you clean because you don't talk about it. You sit up here and watch all this reality TV. These people are doing That's why you hear it in your mind. Because that means they don't came in you. Who's in your house? Do you think God going to come out of heaven and get it out for you? I was in church for years. Went to church faithfully. And ain't nobody said nothing about getting the spirit out of me. That's why when I came to the living ministry, I said, well, why? Why was I at church and nobody didn't, nobody didn't say anything about these spirits in me? Nobody didn't work with me to get these spirits out of me. Then I realized when I got into the living ministry, because when you start getting spirits out of people, that means you got to know how to keep your house clean. Because if you don't keep your house clean, what's on those people going to jump on you? I said, oh, okay. You got to understand it's your responsibility to keep your church clean. Everybody, let's think. Let's have a heart to heart with God. Let's close our eyes and let's ask God. What has stained me? Who are all these people in me that I have gotten comfortable with? These strangers living in my house. I need you to help me recognize these spirits. Help me to be able to hear it. This message is not meant to condemn. It's meant to show you what's in you. Because God wants to clean you up. He sent Jesus to get you back like this. He sent Jesus to keep pouring water, to keep pouring that word in you. The more you eat that word, the more you do the word, the, the, the more light you're going to get. That's why the Bible said, oh, your skin's so pretty. 
seem like you're blowing. It's because you have allowed the word to deal with you. You have allowed the word to chasten you. The Bible says he's chasing those we love. I'm talking, but I need y'all to pray. Close your eyes and talk back to your father. Come on, connect back to your spiritual father. Connect back to him. Forgive me, Father, for looking at what I see in the natural. Forgive me, Father, for going by my feelings and my emotions and not going by your word. Forgive me for not speaking what you see. For when I, you allow me to go through trials and tribulations, forgive me for saying and saying what I see and not saying what your word says. Forgive me, God, for not knowing what your word says. For not having a desire to read. Come on, you got to come up against that spirit of antichrist. Being mad. Because you got convicted. The word is supposed to convict you. The word is supposed to show you where you come short at. Forgive me for not understanding my walk as a believer. 